the management of bills of materials is a core capability in PLM 360. A powerful aspect to this is the ability to configure different views of it so that a bill of materials for a specific assembly can be looked at in different contexts, depending on a user's requirement. To see this in action and how configured bill of materials views can be easily created, let's first take a look at the default bill of materials view offered by PLM 360. We access the Items and Bombs workspace and find a typical assembly. Looking at its Bill of Materials tab, we can see its sub-assemblies and component parts all displayed in a specific format, showing item numbers, revisions and life cycles, quantities, supplier details and costs. Now this is the default view provided by PLM360 when you first subscribe to it. However, it's possible for an administrator to modify this view format or to create other views. So, let's see how we modify the default view. In the Workspace Manager section of our Administration menu, we select the workspace we want to change. and This will usually be the Items and Bombs workspace as this is where our main bills of materials are managed. So we select our Bill of Materials tab and this is where we can work on those bomb views. Now each bomb view is represented by a row of fields which make up that view. Here we can see the definition of the default view we just looked at, consisting of all of those fields within that view such as quantities, supplier details and so on. To modify this view, just like any configuration in PLM360, it's a really simple task. For example, we can drag one of the fields to another position to change the order of the bill of materials. We can delete any of the fields we don't need just by selecting the red cross icon. We can change the name of the view. Or we can add a new field to the bill of materials view by selecting the plus icon. And I'll show you how that works in a moment. If we want to add new views in addition to our existing default one, this is also a simple task. We select the Add View plus icon and a new blank line is created. We just need to give it a name and start adding fields to it using the Add Field plus icon. Next, we need to specify what the first field in the Bill of Materials view will be. To do this, we're given a list of options to choose from as the source of our new field. And you'll see this list consists of four different sections, bomb, item details, sourcing and system fields. Now within these four sections are all of the options open to you in terms of what you can add to a bill of materials view. In the bomb view section, there are three standard fields found typically in all bills of materials. These are quantity, revision pinning and units. However, it's also possible to create your own fields to add to a bill of materials view. And we'll look at how you do that shortly. Next, the item details section lists all fields in the item details tab of the workspace you're configuring section by section. The sourcing fields section always consists of the same three fields, supplier stroke part number, total cost and unit cost. Now these fields are linked directly to the sourcing tab of each bill of materials line item. So where an item has these details completed, they're reflected in the bill of materials automatically, which is how we get our automatic cost roll-up. The final section consists of default system fields, such as the revision and life cycle states. Now selecting any of these fields, such as part number, will assign it in the Bill of Materials to that corresponding information for each line item. We can then change the name displayed in the header of this column. 
we can then add more fields and simply drag them around to set the order in which they're displayed. We can also set this new view as the default one for all users when they select the Bill of Materials tab in an assembly, if we need to. So let's consider a scenario where you may want to have more than one Bill of Materials view. We'll make a few changes and see those views in action. So let's say we need, as well as our default view, a view for the design team and one for our purchasing department. The design team view needs to be brief and stripped down with supplier and cost information removed, while the purchasing department view needs to be more comprehensive. So we'll create our new design view first. Now we could create a brand new view, but we can also clone existing views, and it's easier in this case to do this. So we clone our default view and give our copy a new name of design view. We need to remove the cost and supplier fields, so we'll do that now. We also need to add a new field to show, on the Bill of Materials, the release date for each item. So we add a new field and set it to Release Date from our list of system fields. And we'll keep the default header name. We also need to move our new field to a different column in the Bill of Materials. So we'll drag it to the correct location. We select Save on our new Bill of Materials view is created. We'll also create our purchasing view in the same way. We'll clone the default view, rename it, and then remove two of the existing fields which we don't need in this view. We do need to add one field, however. We'd like to have a column in our Bill of Materials called Stock Location, into which the purchasing team can specify a location for the manufacturing engineers to take each item from when they build the assembly. Now, some parts have more than one stock location, so this field will be unique to each Bill of Materials, hence the reason to have it as a Bill of Materials field rather than a field in the Item Details tab of the part itself. So to do this, we create a new BOM field, and we do this in exactly the same way as when configuring a workspace. Firstly, we give the new field a name, and then set a type. Now in reality, you'd probably create a pick list here, but let's just say it's a text field in this case. We define field and display lengths, and our new field is created. Now we could then create a new field in our Bill of Materials view, as we did before, where we can select our newly created field from the BOM fields list. However, it's easier just to drag and drop the new field into our new view and then reposition it. So we do that and then press Save and our two new Bill of Materials views are complete. So, let's take a look at the result of all this. We go back to the assembly we looked at earlier and to the Bill of Materials tab. We are initially presented with the default view we saw previously. However, if we select the View Picklist menu at the top left, we now have the option to access our Design and Purchasing views. Selecting the Design view, we see our stripped down version with the additional Release Date column we added. Selecting the Purchasing view, we see our more comprehensive version of this Bill of Materials, also containing our new Stock Location field. If we edit the Bill of Materials, we can add values for the stock locations for each item. These values, of course, are unique to this Bill of Materials, and there may be other Bills of Materials containing the same parts, but which have different stock locations. So, you've seen what multiple Bill of Materials views are, how to modify the default view, and how to create new ones. This provides users with a contextual view of a Bill of Materials, so they can more easily and conveniently understand the parameters and information important to them.